We've been talking about the different ways that theology and psychology uh, integrate in this topic. And um, one of the things that we've all find, found so interesting is the ways that they're the same uh -huh. and that we are talking about the same ideas with different language. So let's talk a little bit about what in theology we might call practices of flourishing and in psychology we might call coping skills. What are some of the things that we can um, be teaching our youth universally um, in the you know the preventive stage, um, also in in a situation where a youth is um, actively experiencing depression. What are some of the things? So I think one of the things that we both kind of like when we started to kind of put the list together, both uh, said is this ideal of um, service mm. and contribute like reaching out toward others can actually help. Um, shift the focus um, and open um, open up possibilities for experiencing a sense of hope. Mm -hmm. um, so, so service is is one way. Um, another way, I think, is gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, I just I think about uh, the Psalms, and oftentimes uh, in the Psalms, there's like this kind of depressive kind of uh, way it goes. Um, um, where there's a sense of what Walter Brueggemann calls disorientation. And then all of a sudden there's a sense of reorientation mm -hmm. where there's like, there's a sense of praise in, in being able to call to mind when God's goodness was present. Mm -hmm. And just that calling to, to memory about God's goodness uh, creates a sense of gratitude and thankfulness and a sense of hope that things weren't always this way, that, that maybe God is still acting mm -hmm. in my life. So those are a couple ways. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, um, I love hearing that interpretation of it because this has become a really important part of coping, the coping literature for youth in terms of gratitude. Ah. So it comes from the positive psychology uh, world and it's really about just you don't have to feel like you're happy all the time and happiness is different from gratitude um, but it's really thinking about can you just take a moment to think about three things that you're grateful for or three people for whom you're grateful and that practice is in and of itself can help to shift some of the thoughts that you have that are so absolute there's no one who loves me there's nothing that's going right in my life and actually, uh, there are studies that show who pe that people who practice gratitude exercises on a daily basis um, really do improve their mood over time. Mm -hmm. So there's another great example yes. of the intersection <laughs> of the two worlds. And we've talked a little bit about the cognitive model of mm -hmm. um, behavior therapy, where we talk about thoughts, feelings, and actions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with um, youth who are experiencing depression, especially severe depression, it's hard to initially change thoughts and feelings. Those are, those are a lot of times deep-rooted in, in practice and belief. Um, so we help them by teaching them things they can do to feel better. So those are things that anybody can do. They can, contributing is one of them, mm -hmm. exercising, mm -hmm. taking care of themselves physically by sleeping well and eating healthy food, um, and finding some things that they may not get the same pleasure they once got from, but they still are interested in. Mm -hmm. So sports activities or spending time with friends, watching movies, reading a book, things they can do to feel better. And sometimes with that, the change in thoughts and feelings will follow. Absolutely. Um, you know, another piece that um, I've always found very interesting is, again, thinking about treatment for young kids is the role of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's such an unbelievable connection with prayer. Mm -hmm. So how does one become more in tune with oneself and a higher power? How do you meditate and just learn to be mm -hmm. um, in connection to yourself and to God? And so the practices of meditation can take many different mm -hmm. forms, but I think is another really important and powerful piece mm -hmm. that certainly youth ministers can teach kids different ways. Do you remember one time, so Sarah, Kate and I did this huge night for kids to come in and learn different ways. We did it in mm -hmm. a church, different ways that they could cope. Mm 
-hmm. We had yoga, we had martial arts, we had a smoothie bar, (laughs) and we also had mindful meditation where they walked a path that was created on the floor. So as you were talking about all these things, that memory Mm -hmm. of all the kids coming together and just practicing that Mm -hmm. and talking to each other about how that felt and Mm -hmm. coming up with their own ideas, Mm -hmm. that's another um, great practice to really build that community for them. Mm I was thinking also of uh, just the use of narrative Mm -hmm. um, and the way in which um, narrative uh, kind of the the, uh, kind of skill of asking questions to help um, a person kind of rewrite their narrative in a way that actually does not show them as a victim of depression, but shows them as an agent Mm -hmm. within um, even if if depress, depression is something they continue to wrestle with, they, they become an agent in that process. And I think narrative therapy really can kind of help with that process. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about that a lot in terms of, you know, um, locus of control, who is in control here. And when uh, youth are experiencing depression, they can feel so completely helpless Mm -hmm. and out of control that, um, you know, what you said couldn't ring more true in terms of what's really necessary to get them to a different point in where they are. One of the things I'm thinking as we're talking about this is all the ways that youth ministers and people who love uh, youth can be helpful. And I think it's important to remember that that can be a painful process for the person who's doing the supporting as well. Mm -hmm. And that self-care is so crucial to being a good helper. Um, In order to be there for the adolescents, whether it's a group or an individual, um, youth ministers, and anyone involved in this, um, this role needs to reach out for help too and find ways to cope for themselves. Modeling that is very healthy, but also knowing that they are um, emotionally impacted by watching somebody else suffer. Um, They need to to find ways to take care of themselves too. Absolutely. 